about the gout. On the same page, you have rheumatoid arthritis. Very important that we know what is rheumatoid arthritis is. Underline the word systemic inflammatory disease. What isolation do you go for rheumatoid arthritis? Reverse isolation. Somebody said reverse, yes. Rheumatoid arthritis is systemic inflammatory disease. What is it here? Inflammation. Underline the word rheumatoid arthritis lead to, highlight the word connective tissues and synovial membrane. And next line, deformity. So what, what happened with the rheumatoid arthritis? Deformity. And next line, you will go excavation. Very important word, excavation. What is the meaning, excavation? The word is acute, very sick, very much painful. When we read, your, we read our question, and they're saying patient is admitted. Patient has excavation. What is the meaning excavation? <coughs> patient is very sick. Patient has severe attack of arthritis. Patient is feeling a lot of pain. And physical, emotional are stress. Underline the word stress can cause excavation. And underline the word vasculitis. What is the meaning vasculitis? The blood vessels affected, organs are affected. Underline the word failure system can be affected. So inflammation is affecting where? Vasculitis, the blood vessels. And blood vessels we have all over. That's why it's a systemic disease. What is this disease? Everyone remember the word inflammation. What is it? Systemic inflammation. What happened? Why you have systemic inflammation? Because we have systemic vasculitis. It, the blood vessels are, and it lead to failure. So remember, when you have rheumatoid arthritis, it's not only it's affecting the bones. What is this affecting? System. What is your systems are affected? Your heart, it can damage heart, can damage kidneys, can damage lungs, can damage eyes. Are we clear? They can go blind. They can go with a cardiac failure. They can go respiratory failure. Kidneys can stop. Why? Because inflammation is all over. That is why the word is called systemic disease. So what is rheumatoid arthritis is? It's a systemic inflammatory disease. Some question, they use the word vasculitis. What is vasculitis? The blood vessel. You can write down organ failure and it causing the tissue, they're not getting their circulation. We all know their immune system is low. That's why you're putting where? In reverse isolation. So write down on the side, immune system. And what are they going into? Deformity. Then I want you to highlight the word here is on patient with inflammation, underline, stiffness of joint, muscle atrophy. It affects the muscle atrophy. And uh, decreasing range of motion. And weight loss, they're losing weight. Anemia, low grade fever. Very important that you see C-reactive protein test. Rheumatoid factor is the test. ESR, segmentation rate. Everyone should know rheumatoid factor, ESR, ANA. It's antibodies they're checking. Very important, some of our lab, we must know as a nurses what the doctors would give them. Next page is intervention. Prevent, preserve. What do we preserve? the joints, make sure they continue working exercise. Range of motion exercise are good. Maintain mobility as much as they can do their own work. Isometric exercise, when? When patient has excavation. 
What is excavation? Lot of pain, acute. Patient is having excavation of rheumatoid arthritis, mean they came and they're acutely lot of pain. And what exercise? Then don't pick up answer range of motion. Don't say don't exercise. Don't pick up answer to give pain medication. You still continue isometric exercise. I'll be clear. So that is your answer for isometric exercise. Gluteal, quadricep, abdominal muscle exercise to maintain the muscle strength and cold and heat application. Paraffin bath. A special massage, avoid weight-bearing joint on inflamed, avoid a lot of weight on those joints. Maybe the doctor ordered to use splint to give them rest and in active stage. And conserve energy, monitor for anemia, because of anemia, folic acid and vitamins are important. Now, there is a picture here is showing for rheumatoid arthritis and hands are noted as deformed, like this. See the hands, they can change their shape more on their positioning. It's called ulnar deviation. The word is called ulnar deviation. Why? Because the tendon and synovitis inside, they're damaged and the joints are affected. Medication are Ambrel. Highlight that and I will highlight you on this packet. A lot of drugs are there. Everyone should know these drugs are important. I will highlight on that later. Let's finish this packet. Highlight the word Ambrel. Ambrel is very common drug and it says under anti-arthritic medication, Ambrel, E-N-B-R-E-L, it's anti-inflammatory. Ramicade, that's another medication. Methotrexate is like a cancer drug. They can also use that in the medication section. Under medication section, you'll have Embro, Ramicade, Methotrexate. DMRD word is disease modified anti rheumatic medication. And they are, you'll have Plenicryl, Plenicryl, Gold Salt. They can also give ANSID, a non a steroidal medication, salicylic, aspirin, you can give. Aspirin is your anti-inflammatory medication. So what drug are we giving them? Anti-inflammatory medication. Osteoarthritis are degenerative joint disease. A progressive degeneration of the joint as a result from, underlying the word, wear and tear. It's a degeneration. Osteoarthritis affect weight-bearing joint, such as hip, hands, and the vertebral column. Next page, causes unknown. Causes unknown, contributing factors are trauma, obesity, a stress, and job-related stress to the same joints over and over we are using. Data collection are patient has joint pain, diminish after rest, and early manifested after activity. So when your work is getting worse, rest it, it may diminish the pain. So when you rest, diminish the pain. As disease progress, with slight, in second one, correct the spelling, movement, even slight movement, even on rest, the disease progressing and pain is there. Number three, very important, presence of Haberden nodes and Bouchard, those on the hand. Haberden, the high one on the top, Bouchard nodes, the lower one. So these nodes, they become very big on their hands. These are Haberden and Bouchard. So in some pictures, you will see these are enlarged, they're thick, and these nodes are on the patient's hand. Next is, so Haberden and Bouchard nodes come in this. Number four, joints are swelling. Limited range of motion, muscle atrophy, compression of spine, and they become stiff and muscle, it says the word spas, spasm in both extremity. How do you treat them? By giving ANSID, muscle relaxant. You can give them muscle relaxant. A steroids you can give them. A splint you can use them 
when they have a lot of pain and inflammation. Number four, avoid the large pillow under the head because positioning is not comfortable. Number five is foot cradle or bed cradle to keep the linen off the feet because uh, the feet with the, even the weight of the linen, they feel pain. So foot cradle goes over the bed and the sheet comes over to prevent the pain. Nursing intervention. You can give them hot pack, cold application when there is more inflammation. Muscle relaxant. What are the muscle relaxants are? Highlight the word baclofen. You guys have in there baclofen. What do you monitor? It depresses CNS, central nervous system. What does patient complain? Main one, fatigue. They feel fatigue, constipation, urinary retention. Next page. So everyone, baclofen is what? Muscle relaxant. Next page. It can be also given to the pump in the intrathecal infusion in the spine. Soma is another medication. What is soma? You take it, it's also muscle for muscle. You give them with food. Side effect is rashes. Next medication, flexoril. Flexoril is do not give them with Maui. What is Maui is? Depressant medication. And if they have cardiac problem, number B, underline the word urinary retention and anticholinergic, increasing glycoma. So you got to be careful when you're giving for glycoma patient. Dentrium is another medication. What is dentrium? It comes under a skeletal muscle relaxant. Directly, it works on skeletal muscle and reducing the activity. Number B, affect the liver. Check the liver for your patient. Number C, liver function test. Number C, sun wear. Uh, prevent them from sun. Number E, side effect. If you go on E, GI bleeding, photosensitivity, and rashes. Valium. Valium is muscle relaxant also, and you are giving for anxiety. But where does affect the Valium is CNS. Where do we give Valium? Patient with seizure. Patient has a long seizure. What medication you give right away? Valium. When you give Valium, make sure you monitor breathing. Don't it affect the muscle. Number C, sedation. They can be very sedated. And I want you to write down monitor airway and breathing because you're giving IV and because it depresses, so check the respiration. Robaxin, when you are giving Robaxin for muscle, check for renal and kidney. Number C, when you are giving Robaxin and you are giving IV, it can cause thrombophlebitis. Number C, Extravasation means if it goes outside the vein, it can cause thrombophlebitis. And it says tissue sliding, but cross that word. The word is called tissue in number C, sloughing. Sloughing means the tissue are damaging. Sloughing word, S-L-O-U-G-H-I-N-G, sloughing. So it caused sloughing. So if you are giving IV. Number E, check for vision. Gout medication. In gout, you can give, you want to lower uric acid. Number two, you can also give them NSAIDs because they have inflammation. Number three, you can give glucocorticoid. Glucocorticoid are steroids. So remember, you can treat them for gout, with gout medication, as well as inflammatory medication. Number four and five, very important for your gout. What is number four? Aluperinol and xylopram. And number five, colchicin and probensid and turon. So four drugs are here. And what is the side effect? Highlight the word, bone marrow depression. But very, very important, number two. Nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. What does the mouth has? Metallic taste, sore gum, intervention. 
what do you monitor when we are giving uh, gout medication, uric acid, CBC, number two is very important, increase fluid. You have some more diet here. Re remember, for your NCLEX, everyone should know di diet. Any questions I'm doing with diet, start writing someplace and start knowing what food do you have for low purine. Now we have some there, we had wine, alcohol, organ meat, but we didn't have sardine, salmon, and scallop. So they're also high with purine. Avoid aspirin with the gout medication. Why? Because it increased the uric acid. Number four is very important here. Number two, fluid is important. And number five is yearly eye exam. They can affect the eye. Next page, allopurinol is affecting visual <coughs> eyes. And give them with food. Is allopurinol is you give them with food. Antiarthritic medication, rheumatoid, disease modified medication is number B, secondary to NSAID. You can give DMRD and you can give secondary with them NSAID. Side effect are with disease modified medication are monitor acamosis work, injection side, affecting the bone marrow, pancytopenia, underline that. Before receiving live vaccine, because their immune system. So before you are giving any medication, get checked for the live vaccine. Lab, what lab do you do? Neutrophil, platelet, white blood count, write down the word CBC. CBC is the complete blood test that includes all. So CBC would be done to check their white blood count and all. Very common number two medication is Humira. You always hear on the TV, new drugs. And injection size, and check for Humira, visual, underline that word. Immuron, you can give. It's immune suppressive medication, you can give them. Next is number four, Rudera. It's a oral gold preparation for rheumatoid. Number five, Embrel. Embrel, check for heart failure and hematology, blood test. Pla Plaquenil is checked for visual. Now you already have here, these drugs all are important. Pain, uh, next page is number eight, azulfadine. Azulfadine is also your rheumatoid arthritis medication, bone marrow suppression. Number nine, Ramicade, you can give them also monitor for liver. Osteoporosis drugs are, you give them calcium, give them vitamin D, biophosphonate word is there, and Fosamax, number four, Bonivia, number five, Actinol. Contraindicated, do not give them if patient has problem in esophagus, esophageal disorder. Or if patient cannot sit or stand, you cannot give the medication. When you're giving these medication, nothing to eat, 30 minutes. I want you to highlight that, don't give. So how do you give Fosamax, Bonivia, Actinol, <clears throat> empty stomach, no medication, no food. And what do you give them after with the medication? Water, they got to swallow, drink a lot of fluid and position upright. So make sure you guys write down empty stomach, fluid, number two, and number three, they must sit upright position. So if they give you Fosamax, Boniviact and all, what are you not give to the patient if they have esophagitis? So next is adverse reaction, so they must sit for 30 minutes and give them with a lot of water. Avista is also your medication for osteoporosis. You cannot give them Avista a patient has throm thrombolytic problem, circulation. Someone who is laying longer time, immobilization, or restricted activity, it affects their bones. So you cannot give them 
with a vista. And for the max, we already talked. Next, next page, Fortico world. Fortico, you are giving, it's a thyroid, uh, it's a parathyroid hormone. So I want you to add there PTX world. That means parathyroid hormone, and you are giving Fortico for a patient who has low calcium or hypoparathyroid. Hypoparathyroid patient you are giving is parathyroid hormone, which is called Fortico, okay? So that's the drug, and just highlight that one, Fortico. And you are giving, it's a parathyroid hormone. What is another medication do you give if they have really very low calcium and pay after thyroidectomy, calcium gluconate. Everyone remember the word Fortico? And calcium gluconate is also given in IV when patient has thyroidectomy. Calcium gluconate. In the last one on this package, eight, calcitonin. I said you give calcitonin for which patient? When they have hypercalcemia. Hypocalcemia, you are giving Fortico. Hypercalcemia, we are giving calcitonin. So, and that can be given through the nose. And before you give uh, to the nose, check for nasal irritation. And alternate the nostrils. And sometimes they ask that, how do you give them? Intranasal and alternate. Now let's pick up this packet, and I'll have you highlight the drugs if you have that packet. And if you don't, then make sure you get it. And I will have you show some of the drugs are given medication for rheumatoid arthritis. Underline the word salicylate aspirin. You can give aspirin. It's a anti-inflammatory. Third box, if you will go, aspirin should be taken with food. What do you monitor? Are bleeding. So highlight that and drink with water or take it with the food. Aspirin is your NSAID. Second medication on NSAIDs are Indosin. I'll skip all of them, highlight aspirin, and then you will go Indosin, where it says non-steroidal. Indosin is analgesic and anti-inflammatory. On the same page, it says non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, and you have Indosin. Yeah, if you need a package, take it. And Indosin, you are giving, and what is the Indosin? Go on the last box, is give them with milk or food. And monitor blood pressure. Monitor for bleeding. What do you monitor? For blood pressure and bleeding. Next is Motrin. Ibuprofen is Motrin, and Motrin you go in the last box. Delayed absorption if taken with food. So if you take it with food, it can cause. Monitor the blood pressure. In the third box, it says fluid retention. In the third one, Motrin. In the second one, you have analgesic. And third box, if you will go, is it says in the fourth line, fluid retention. So if you're taking Motrin, Motrin causes fluid retention, and fluid retention can lead to hypertension. Next one is also your medication, Tolectin. But everyone should know aspirin, endosin, Motrin. These are all your anti-steroidal medication. Next page, naprosin. Naprosin is important, and what do you give naprosin in the third box? Give them with food or antacids. Tell the patient avoid driving until dosage has been established. More, because in the third box, you go cause drowsiness. So naprosin in the third box, it's the same as ibuprofen, but cause uh, is drowsiness. Next medication is Mobic. Mobic underneath naprosin, and also in Mobic they wrote a lot of things. But I will tell you to highlight in the uh, number second, third box, 
is instruct the patient avoid using aspirin or anything which is containing with Mobic. So don't take Mobic and aspirin together. Assess for allergies with aspirin. Then you go in the next line, monitor for bleeding. Advise patient to report any weight gain is important. Next is you skip two of them and you go COX-2 inhibitor. Common drug, we all should know naprosyn, Mobit, and COX-2 inhibitor. What is COX-2 inhibitor? Very common medication, Celebrex. Highlight that word COX inhibitor, Celebrex. Third box, GI bleeding. And has been linked to increased risk of cardiac problem or such as MI or stroke, Celebrex. Celebrex GI bleeding. Third box, if you will go. GI bleeding, uh, uh, give medication orally, and Celebrex indicate relief sign of osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Do not give if patient has asthma, urticaria, or allergies. And last line, monitor GI bleeding. And from the bottom, the third line, check allergies with sulfenamides. If you guys can find that sulfenamide word in the end. So Celebrex is very important. Naprosyn is very important that we know. Prednisone, we all know, is a steroid. And they can use it for rheumatoid arthritis. Let's go to the next page. Is the first paragraph is all a steroid, but let's go another slow-acting anti-inflammatory medication. What are anti-inflammatory medication is Pliquinel, underline that. And when you are giving in the last box, eye exam, every six months they should check eye exam. But this medication is also anti-inflammatory. Then you go Ridura word, R-I-D-A-U-R-A. -A. Next one is also, but these are the common one, and go on the third box, sunlight. Minimize exposure of sunlight and oral hygiene. In the third box, stomatitis. So when you are giving Ridura, affecting stomatitis. Another medication is Enbrel. Go in the third box, and it's a DMRD medication. Embrel, very common drug. Third box, pain at injection site. And upper respiratory infection, and in case patient has tuberculosis possible. So they screen them before they give if they have any infection or TB. Last box, they give sub-Q. They can give in abdomen and thigh. Refrigerate them, but never freeze them. Use for cautious patient with chronic infection. May cause uh, aggravate systemic lupus arrhythmiatus. So embryo is very common drug and is given by injection, very expensive. And they have to give them to reduce, so right away, they don't start on patient embryo, they give aspirin, naprosyn, and other drugs. But when inflammation is bad, this control the inflammation so they're not getting inflammation throughout the body because organs are going to be damaging. So embryo, very important, we all know the word. Remicade, go in the last one, remicade on this page. Upper respiratory infection in the third box. Two to six weeks. And eight weeks uh, IV, they can give them initially Remicade, and then every eight weeks thereafter. And monitor with infection. Next page, if you will go on, is Humera. We got to recognize the wording. And if you will know the wording, because you're going to treat the patient in your question, what drug do you give what patient has, like rheumatoid arthritis, so you have to pick up the medication. Humera is also anti-inflammatory. Third box, increased risk of infection and rash. Assess for infection before you give them. Do not give patient if they have any active infection. And this is Humera. 
Next one is Zulfadeen. Is Zulfadeen GI effect, anorexia and vomiting. Last box, ask the patient, may cause orange yellow discoloration of the urine. So azulfadine can change the color of the urine and also take them, space the doses around the clock and drug after food with eight ounces of water. They should do lab underline CBC. So when you are looking azulfadine, immediately you know is a anti-inflammatory medication. Humera, anti-inflammatory medication. Embra, anti-inflammatory medication. But these are strong and the good medication. Last box, you have all these names, but I highlighted the main one. But let's go immune suppressant medication because their immune system is low. They can give them cytoxin. When you're giving an Imuran, then you have topical cream or Zostix that can be used on topical cream. Now, I gave you the package, but don't get panicked. Don't get too over much. But if you do consistently every day some drug package, that will help you. Like today you do and go on, I know, the rheumatoid arthritis medication, Humira. And write down some places, start memorizing some of the side effects. But a lot of questions, a lot of things, we got to recognize what drug are we giving to the patient when they are admitted. Are we clear? So you got to know anti-inflammatory medication and these are the drugs. So do your questions and we finished here about all the, uh, in the skeletal system, the fractures and all kinds of ambulation, you must know, gout we should know, and some of your drugs are here in this package. All right.